Hello friends, this video on Biotechnology Principles Part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us talk about the naming of restriction endonuclease because you already saw ECO R1, BAM H1, so such weird names. So how do we name these restriction endonucleases? Now every restriction endonuclease enzyme will have their first letter derived from the genus like every Every restriction endonucleus, as I said, that restriction enzymes are found in the bacteria. So depending upon the particular uh, bacteria from which that particular restriction endonuclease enzyme is being extracted, they are named. So their first letter will always represent the genus to which the bacteria belongs. The second and third letter will represent the species of that particular bacteria. So let us take the example of ECORI. So if you see, this is how we write it, ECORI. So what is E? E is for the genus, that is Escherichia. So E is for Escherichia. CO is for coli. So E. coli is the particular bacteria. So instead of Escherichia, only E. Instead of coli, it is CO. So second and third letter are from the species. What about the fourth letter? So the fourth letter represents the strain of the bacteria. So here you have R. So R would represent the rough strain. That means rough strain of E. coli bacteria. And finally, there is a Roman number. Here you have 1. And what does this 1 indicate? It indicates the order in which the enzymes were isolated. That means this was the first enzyme to be isolated from E. coli. So it is E. co R1. So this is how all the restriction endonucleases are named. Now currently we have more than 900 restriction enzymes which have been isolated from almost over 200 strains of bacteria. So you see if we do not have a very specific naming convention then it becomes very difficult to uh, distinguish between the different restriction, endo enzy restriction enzymes. 900 is a big number so we have so many enzymes and that too they have all been derived from some 200 strains of bacteria. So that is the reason why we follow such a specific a convention of naming the enzymes. So each of these enzymes will have a specific recognition sequence. So let us look at some of the other examples of restriction endonuclease enzyme. So when you say eco ri, so that's that R1, that's what I told you just now. So this eco R1 is derived or extracted from Escherichia coli. So that is why E and then co from coli you get CO. So it is eco. R is the strain that is the rough strain and 1 is the first enzyme which was extracted from E. coli. Next is BAM H1. So here BAM is B is from bacillus and AM is from amyloliquefaciens. So this is the uh, bacteria from which BAM H1 is derived and H represents the strain and 1 is for the first enzyme to which have been extracted. Third is HIND2. So this is from this bacteria that is Haemophilus. So from here it gets H and IN. So that is how it is HIN and D is the strain and 2 represents the Second, back, second uh, enzyme which was extracted from Haemophilus influenza. Then SAL1. So here S is for Streptomyces. AL is for Albus. So SAL1. One would mean the first enzyme which have been extracted from Streptomyces Albus. So this is how all the restriction endonucleases are named and that is why you find their names little weird. But please do remember that each restriction endonuclease will have a specific recognition sequence. So each of them will have one specific sequence. So they will also cut the enzyme at, cut the DNA at a particular site and this that is specific to each enzyme. So that is how they work. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.